Last week we had a little bit of a, a different kind of church service here. Um, Ryan shared some some announcements uh, that he had, and then I kind of went over the first two, and then I kind of had a little mini sermonette. And the, the topic of that was was finishing well. Something I haven't given much thought to in my life. But something I've been given a lot of thought to lately, especially since this conversation that, that Brian and I had, and I really like the thought of finishing well. Okay, we we looked at the Apostle Paul and in, in 2 Timothy, he says, I have, I have, I have fought the fight, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith, okay? And we looked at uh, Philippians 1.6, which is also Paul writing to the church in, in Philippi. He says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I know. <laughs> Look at Jesus. <laughs> we need to fix that. But he's all right. Um, you know, we, we, we brought obviously Jesus into the into the scenario. And we can we can finish anything well as long as we know that Jesus is by our side. Okay? Finishing well. Today I want to talk about the word focus, because those two topics, I believe, go incredibly well. They go hand in hand with each other. You can't finish well if you don't have some, some focus in your life. And last week when we were talking about finishing well, we were talking about the big picture and the, and the little projects. Okay, the, the macro and the micro. The macro in finishing well is, you know what? A day's coming when Jesus is coming to take me home. Amen. We're all headed for the long dirt nap, okay? Last time I checked, the, the mortality rate is still running right around 100%. <laughs> okay? So the, the big picture, the macro, I want to finish well. The micro, I want to finish well in the things I do in this world. I have this project and I have that project and I want to finish them well. And I will do that as long as I stay in Christ. Okay? Uh, I love this, this verse. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Okay, that's when we talk about focus today. Again, we have a big picture, and we have the smaller pictures. Okay? Because we're tying this into finishing well. The big picture is I want to stay focused on the Holy Spirit. I want to stay focused on God, which will allow me in my little projects, the micro, to stay focused, okay? Which will allow me to finish well. I have a, a commentary here. Um, excuse me. You're not supposed to turn your back on the audience. <laughs> um, this is a commentary, Adventist commentary. And it's on this particular verse right here. This is beautiful. It says, it is no more possible to serve two masters than it is to focus the sight intently upon two things at one time, or to concentrate the thought, the mind, upon more than one idea at a given moment. Check this. This is powerful. 
To attempt to serve God with a divided heart is to be unstable in all of one's ways. The macro, okay? So today we talk about finishing well and we talk about focus. They go hand in hand with each other. Let's, uh, let's have a prayer. Father God, Lord, as always, we want to start with a thankful heart. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this Sabbath. I thank you for these friends. And as I always do, Lord, I pray that you would just use me right now. Help me to get out of the way. Speak through me. We love you. And we pray this as we always do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Quick story here. Uh, right after I got out of rehab the last time, many years ago, I decided that I was going to become a pilot, okay? I wanted to fly. <clears throat> One of my friends, another broker, uh, was a pilot. He had, he taught, okay? He had his own plane. And he, we, we hooked up and uh, Cindy was not very happy about this, okay? Not at all. And, and uh, I sent out for these, these cassette tapes. It was a home study course on the written test. And I use this illustration because it's a time in my life where I was major league focused on, on a project. One of the micro projects, you know, this isn't my relationship with God. This is just something I was going to do. And I started studying. I got this just boatload of cassette tapes. It wasn't, you know, there was a lot to learn there. And I would come home from work. And I would study for maybe an hour or two every night. And I was convinced if I missed one question, on the written test for my pilot's examination, I was going to be upset with myself. So I studied hard. And I went and took the test. Sure enough, I got up, felt very confident. A couple weeks later, got a note from the FAA that I had, I had passed the test. I had scored 100. I aced it. I was happy. I was focused. Uh, I was going out almost on a daily basis and flying. I forgot, Bruce is a teacher here. That's awesome. Um, this was back in a time when, especially at Delta Airlines, I think it was, there was a lot of controversy over pilots getting high, and uh, it, was a, it was a big deal. And, and so here I am, and I've already taken my medical or my, my physical for my medical certificate, passed that with flying colors, and I had a feeling this one day that, that my, my instructor was going to have me solo. And I was all excited because I was pretty sure he was going to have me solo that day. It was over here at Centennial Airport. And uh, sure enough, we went out and did some touch and goes. That's where you just circle around and land and then gun it and touch it and take back off. I did three touch and goes. And he said to, to pull over and, and drop me off. And he said, he said, now go do three more touch and goes by yourself. And I was expecting this. I was very focused. I was excited. And it was a really quiet day at the airport. It's, it's funny because I took off and there was no air traffic at all. But the minute I took off for my, my first touch and go, it's like all of the planes in Colorado circled in on, on um, on Centennial, <coughs> and the, the the folks in the tower were quite concerned about me. I mean, all of a sudden, there's traffic everywhere, and uh, they called me up on the radio and said Cessna, whatever, whatever, whatever. Turned to frequency so and so. They 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 wanted me on my own frequency, so I wouldn't have to worry about all this jibber jabber on the radio, and. Uh, did the three touch and goes, landed, parked the plane, and, and uh, drove home. 
very focused. Got home, Cindy was just madder than Hades at me. Okay. I didn't tell her I was going to fly by myself that day. I didn't know for positive that I was, but I was pretty sure. And she was just mad at me. And, and uh, you know, to, to make a long story short, Obviously, I'm talking here about the, the focus that I had in this micro project I was working on. Um, probably a blessing that I never got my pilot's license. Uh, if you've ever driven with me, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it turns out they, they found out that I had just gotten out of rehab. They found out that I had an issue with drugs and alcohol, and they pulled my, my medical certificate. They grounded me, and I just kind of gave up on the project. Cindy was very thankful for that. Um, but I was focused on the test. I was focused on the flying. I was in the moment, okay? I was not distracted at all. I wanted to finish it well. Turn please to Romans. If you're in Matthew, it's a little bit to your right. Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to... Uh, Read 5 through 8. Paul speaking to the church in Rome. He says, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. Notice right in the very beginning, verse 5, twice it uses the words, the mind's set on. Okay, what is your mind set on? It talks about the sinful nature or it talks about the spirit. Okay? And when we're talking about the macro picture here of focus, we're either going to be with the Lord or not. Okay? There's no little bit of faith here. There's no little bit of focus here. It's all in, or it's not, okay? Uh, you know, and again, I, I hope and pray that each and every one of us, and I believe that we are here in this, in this church, we're, we're focused on God. And that's what's made the difference in our life. So, you know, real simple <coughs> question for you this morning. What is it? that you're focused on. What is it that you're focused on? And you know, kind of a an overused illustration we talk about is there are two items in your possession that will really tell you what you're focused on. One of them is your checkbook. That'll answer a lot of questions. And the other one is your day timer. What is it that you are focused on? You know, I absolutely love to watch God work. And earlier in the week, I was kind of stumbling around for maybe another illustration here. And I got an email. Uh, just when I needed it. Susan Lewicki, some of us know Susan. Kent and Susan used to go to church here. Uh, she sent me this, this story 
And she said, you know, Pastor, maybe you could use this as an illustration sometime. And it was perfect for what I'm talking about today. I emailed her right back. I said, man, I just love to watch God work. This is perfect. I said, I will be using this illustration this coming Sabbath. Just, just too cool. And it's the story, excuse me, It's the story of the lion tamer, okay? And I remember when I was a kid and I'd go to the circus, you know, many, many moons ago, you, you would see the lion tamer and he would, he would go into this cage with maybe one lion, maybe a bunch of lions. And it was just, as a little boy, I was just amazed. I thought the guy was nuts. Okay, the lion tamer. And, you know, we kind of, for the purpose of this illustration, we do need to think back 40 or 50 years here. And, you know, I, I did some, some looking up and I watched some videos. And the lion tamer, he would go into the cage with three items. One of them, he had a side, he had a side arm. He had a gun. Okay, makes sense. The other item was he had a, a whip, okay? Who can, who can tell me what the third item was? Chair. Pardon me? Chair. A chair or a stool, a, a chair, a light one, okay? And he would use that, and if you watch some of the videos, they use it a lot. And they discovered that the lion is a very single-minded animal, okay? Most of them are. My dog, I mentioned before, he doesn't have the ability to ponder things, okay. He's got one thing on his mind, and that's usually, when are we going to play and when am I going to eat? Single-minded, and you think about this lion, single-minded beast. He's probably thinking, well, I'm going to rip this guy's head off. <laughs> but what they found out happens with the chair. And you'll see it. I mean, these lion tamers, they would not think about going into the cage without their chair. They would put it in front of the lion, and the lion would see the four legs sticking out. And he would try to focus on all four legs. And he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. And what it did is it weakened him? And it confused him. These four legs right in front of him weakened and confused him because he tried to focus on all four of them. Great lesson for us there. You know, we talk a lot, especially over these last couple of decades, the word multitasking. You know, that was... A ways back, that was a huge compliment, you know. Someone go in for a job interview, oh, he's a, he's a great multitasker. And you know what I say to that? Yeah! Okay, what does that mean? To multitask. It, it only serves to dilute your focus on the project. At hand. I'm the master at it. You know, I'm the most distracted person in the world. You know, I'm preaching to the choir right now. Multitasking is for the birds. Focus is where it's at, my friends. Again, what are you focused on this morning? Turn, please, a little bit to your right. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And this is just reiterating a little bit about what we read in, in Romans a bit ago. And uh, in my version of the NIV here, above verse 1, 
that's what, where we're going to start. 3 verse 1, it says rules for holy living. And I'll read, uh, I'll read the first two verses. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Okay? It's all about choices here, folks. And you can't have it both ways. You know, the macro picture. I want to choose to be in Christ today. And even in the micro, these projects that I have that I want to finish well, I want him to come alongside of me and give me direction. This one uses the word heart, or heart. You know, we, we have a value here at Step 7, a value of, of purpose. You know, we talk about what's your, what's your purpose. Find your, find your why. Find your purpose and, and focus. A month or two ago, Brian gave a message, and he was referring to Caleb back in the book of Numbers. Caleb, okay. And Caleb is referred to from God as serving him wholeheartedly. Okay. Not half-baked, but wholeheartedly. In, in Ephesians chapter, chapter 6, verse 7, it says, serve wholeheartedly, as if you are serving the Lord, not men. We have, again, this, this value of purpose. Find your why. Find your purpose and focus there. Even better, find His purpose for you. Proverbs 19, verse 21, says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Find your purpose. Find His purpose for you. And focus in on it with a laser-like focus so that you may Finish well. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you. And Lord, I ask that you would just speak to all of us today. Speak to us about finishing well in the smaller things. Speak to us about finishing well. So that when that day comes, Lord, when the skies part and you come to, to take us home, we'll just be so excited to do that. And help us, Lord, to stay focused on what it is that you would have us do in the moment so that we might, as we've been talking about, so that we might finish everything that we do, that we might finish it well, according to your purpose for us. We love you, we thank you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.